Welcome to Season 8, Episode 36 of Let's Go Blues Radio, the often imi imitated, never duplicated, original St. Louis Blues Hockey Podcast. We're broadcasting live on Wednesday, October 23rd, 2019. This is franchise episode number 222 all time. Your host tonight are yours truly, Kurt Price, Bill Day, and Jeff Ponder. And for your listening pleasure, we'll be with you for the next little while talking to Stanley Cup champion, St. Louis Blues Hockey. To interact with us on social media, follow the show on Twitter at LGB Radio. You can follow me at Kurt Price. You can follow Bill at Billy Blue Note and Jeff at jponder94. You can follow us on Instagram, like us on the Facebook, and the website is letsgoblues.com where you can listen to or watch past episodes, browse the discussion forum, as well as get some cool T-shirts, mugs, and stickers that help support the show. Uh, and for those of you watching live, the show uh, right now on YouTube, uh, feel free to comment in the live chat. We already have a comment. Someone says, hey, say, hey, hey back. <laughs> I, I'm surprised it wasn't 30 <laughs> minutes late. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but oh, we, we are 30 minutes late. God, we're terrible. We are, we are very <laughs> dedicated to, to doing it right or not doing it at all. That's damn it. That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, Jeff and uh, Bill, uh, the, Jeff, the Stanley Ponder Cup uh, tournament, is is that full yet? I saw one spot it, remaining. It, it is full as of about four hours ago. So we okay. have all spots filled, but I do recommend for anybody who would like to play, uh, we typically have one to two people who uh, bail last minute. So uh, sign up for that waiting list because uh, you'll be the first to get it. We have nobody on the waiting list right now, and your money is refunded on uh, the Sunday after the tournament. So a reminder for those, or maybe for those that uh, are new to the show or haven't listened before, November 23rd, it's a Saturday, it's out at Queenie Park, the Stanley Ponder Memorial Cup Tournament, Stanley Ponder Cup Memorial Tournament. Which one should it be? Because I use both. I, I botched it last week I, when I introduced it. I, I switched the words around a, a number of different ways, and it, I'm sure people Memorial know Memorial Stanley Memorial Cup. Yeah, Cup Ponder Memorial. thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's uh, so yeah, it's it's a benefit for those uh, that that don't know for uh, Leukemia Lymphoma Society as well as BeTheMatch.org, which is an organization that most Blues fans should know. Again, that's November twenty third. Some inline hockey, some some bad hockey, but you know what? We're also going to have some some auctions going on. We've got a Jordan Bennington Stanley Cup champs jersey, Henrik Lundqvist Sweden jersey. The other day, I got in the mail a couple Nordiques and Whalers t-shirts. So there's some cool stuff that's uh, going to be there for auction. So come on out. Have a good time. Find out more information over at dropinstl.com and click on the tab that says 2019 SPCM Tourney or something like that. So we all know it's the whale. Is it the Deke or the Nord? No. No? <laughs> it's just the, the Nord. Nord. It's just the Nordiques. Was it the Nord? Was it that the old the like Nord. Domino's Pizza the no, noid. The noid. The noid. Oh, yeah. Showing our age here, boys. <sighs> That's classic. <laughs> Figured uh, we, we got uh, some stickers uh, that we're selling. Uh, Let's go blues.com on the front page. Uh, they're a blues hockey and a stag beer mashup design, uh, which was our own creation. Uh, so if you, if you see that sticker or design anywhere else, someone stole it. Uh, it's available now at let's go blues uh, Two bucks each for shipping. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, two bucks plus shipping. And uh, if you buy four, you get one free. So uh, check that out. Hey, I want uh, to point out before we get to anything else, we I guess we turned a lot of people on to Letterkenny, or they now know <laughs> they can I talk to us like we watched Letterkenny. I saw that. Bob Rakowski says, how are you now? Dan Dreheim <laughs> says, always come up with new and innovative beginnings to the show, and that's what I appreciate about you. <laughs> Is that what you appreciate about me, Dan? That's awesome. Uh, I, Why don't you dial it back about 10%? <laughs> I evangelized Letterkenny <laughs> earlier today. Uh, the guy that I golf with, big big hockey fan, should be a big Letterkenny fan. So he was going to go home and binge the first season tonight. Awesome. Well, uh, let us know how that goes. And, and we'll be eagerly anticipating to hear his review <clears throat> on next week's show. I'll, I'll see if he'll come on and, and give us his <laughs> review. Uh, Paulie Mills in the YouTube chat said, uh, when is this? I assume he means the uh, tournament. The Ponder uh, Cup. November 23rd. Yeah. November 23rd starts at 2 o'clock. Ceremonial pup truck pup. Oh, <laughs> so truck drop. Ceremony truck drop. <laughs> <laughs> drop a truck right there in the middle of the rink. First time uh, ever. And Dan Drahan wants to know how in YouTube he can change his name to Squirrely Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Bill. He's the Google guy. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yes. Yeah, we had... Like yeah, we, we are late getting started tonight because we had some uh, connection connectivity issues, and Bill was 
uh, the, out of the three of us, uh, I'm embarrassed to say that I work in IT, and he he's the one that uh, <laughs> I figured out we should Google the uh, issue, and, <laughs> and we figured it out. So We're yeah. sitting here putting our arms up like, what is this issue? We've never seen this before. <laughs> right. And Bill's like, hang on, I Googled it. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, wait, there's an that. app. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Derp. Uh, there's it's, an app for that. It, it comes with having parents who have yes. technology yes, 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 but yes. aren't good at it. Uh, we have a guest with us uh, this show. If uh, you have been following Twitter or uh, seen the announcements, so we have uh, Natalie Condon on. Uh, she is the uh, St. Louis Cup tracker, the, the genius behind the, uh, <laughs> the, at, the at STL Cup tracker uh, Twitter account, which will let folks know uh, in St. Louis or in the St. Louis area uh, where the cup uh, is, was rumored to be heading. So, um, yeah. Jeff, Jeff, Mr. Interviewer, are you ready? <laughs> are you ready to take this on? That's me. I am ready. Awesome. Uh, first of all, Natalie, thank you very much for joining the show. Uh, it's an absolute honor to have you on, and I think I can speak for all St. Louis mm -hmm. when I say you're doing God's work. Oh, my gosh. Thank <laughs> you so much. It's been such a fun and really, really tiresome summer, but um, there's no better reason to, to be doing it. So, yeah, I had a great time. Thank you, guys for having me on the show. Of course. Uh, so I have to ask right now, where is the Stanley Cup right now at 9.48 p.m. on Wednesday night? <laughs> um, I am a psychic, as everyone on Twitter knows. I know everything at all times. So I think that right now it's in Canada, and in 30 seconds it's going to be <laughs> polished and shined and maybe rotated a couple times. I don't know. Um, and then it's just going to take like a quick nap there for the next, I think it's two months until the all-star game. So that's I heard, where it'll be. I heard that when it's on the road, it doesn't, it doesn't get polished that often, but I heard I that on the road, when they wash it, they wash it with hotel soap. I that's wouldn't a, doubt it. Apparently it's not, uh, there's Ooh. fewer chemicals and it's, uh, it's not as harsh on the cup. So when they do wash it, they wash it with uh, hotel soap. Oh, my gosh. Well, they told me when I got to kiss it that I was the first kiss of the day. So I felt <laughs> nice. a little uh, better about that. Yeah. So, I've kissed it three God. times. I'm just going to go ahead and put that up. Oh, I, lucky I, you. <laughs> I have, too. We're, uh, we've hat tricked the cup each. We're Eskimo oh brothers with the Stanley Cup. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, with the Stanley Cup. I mean, well, he looks there's... like a good kisser. Uh, yes, yes. He was a good kisser. A I softer. bet. Best yeah, kiss I've ever a, had, I'll tell you that. Me too. Oh, hands down. Uh, that's so right. let me ask you this question, and, and I didn't. I, this just popped in my head as I said this. That you know, Kurt and I, we we both were under the impression that um, you don't have to. So before the Blues won it, Kurt yes. and I, we 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 touched it, we kissed it, we did whatever we wanted to it because we said, you know what? <laughs> One, the Blues are never going to win the Cup because that was our right. honest belief. And oh, two, yeah. we're not players. So we can do that. We're never going to actually technically go on the rink and win it. And we had a lot of people combat us on that. What is your view? Yeah, I wouldn't touch it. I am okay. completely superstitious. So I'll touch it all I want now since the Blues have won. If I ever right. see it out again, I, I'm good. But prior to that, I wouldn't have touched it. So you would have been one of the ones berating us on Twitter. I probably was one of them. <laughs> I'm just you probably kidding. were. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I am completely anti-internet trolls after being the recipient of one for, you know, three months or more than, that, I guess, four months. Um, now I have a new found respect for celebrities that deal with that on the daily because the handful of comments I got were not very fun, to be honest. Oh, even just us. I mean, we, we're not <laughs> celebrities by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, at the most, you can consider us regionally famous. And uh, I'll take it. The, cr the crap that we get, it's like, man, I can't even imagine what, what these oh celebrities have to deal with. It's crazy. People are so entitled on the Internet, and um, everything is, Pat Maroon is your didn't fault. Bring the cup to my house. Oh, my God. Pat Maroon's day with the cup was like my <laughs> personal nightmare because – Everybody wanted to know where it was at every second. And then it was my fault for not staging a parade down Telegraph. And like it was, yep. I should have set something up for the public to, to see an event. And I totally agree. Um, like, you know, would have been awesome to do something like that. But was like, I just am reporting what's coming my way, you know. So that was a hard, 
hard day for sure. Were you on Twitter before you started the uh, STL Cup Tracker account? I was. My personal account, I mean, I've got, I think, like 1,200 followers, and the tweets are usually um, pretty weird and about, like, Dennis Quaid and, you know, a lot of, like, <laughs> random stuff. I went through and deleted a lot of them because people would think that I have social um I don't know, quirks to me if people read my tweets. So after this, a lot of people requested me and I was like, I should probably delete all those tweets about how hot I think Dennis Quaid is. That might be a little weird. So I, um, yeah, I did. I did have a Twitter. I have an Instagram account and um, I like social media. So I thought it would be kind of a fun mm -hmm. thing to get to do. So day after tomorrow, greatest movie ever made? I mean, anything with Dennis Quaid in it to me is like second to none. I'm devastated by his recent <laughs> engagement news. Um, he's engaged oh, to a 26 right. year old. Like 26, yeah. I can't take it. I had someone check in on me to make sure I was okay. Um, <laughs> I'm coping well. I did have an ice cream tonight, but it's just, uh, I can't talk about it yet. You know, uh, it, since Dennis Quaid is no longer available, the principal <laughs> from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, I think, is available. So you can oh my God. maybe is he go still up that alive? Room. He's uh, he's actually uh, he's not in a, bad shape. He's in bad shape. <laughs> he's in bad shape. Oh my God! No, no, I mean, I mean, with like the law. So you know, right. oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I don't know anything about it. Oh my God! <laughs> they in bad health shape. I was like, that's no. That just took a turn. But maybe, maybe Gary dang. Busey. Gary Busey? Gary, oh, I thought Gary Busey, I thought he had died too. He's, he was on celebrity, <laughs> celebrity rehab and he is, he's pretty crazy, but Gary, he could bring a good time to the party. Oh, you I'm know? sure. <laughs> he's got a lot of, he, conversation would never be dull with Gary Busey. No, I can't imagine. Uh-uh. <laughs> God, never. no thanks. So yeah, so the long term. But I do want to say, I mean, uh, you you mentioned that, uh, you know, you, you, you might need a friend because Dennis Quaid's news. It looks like you got one right there behind you. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is, um, this is the first love of my life. Um, I am actually Mrs. George W. Bush. Um, you know, we have a long-distance relationship, and it's complicated, but we make it work because we're in love. And... So, you're, so you're kind of jealous of Michelle Obama now, right? Because the whole... You don't understand. I have candy in my purse all the time, and no one films me giving it away to people. <laughs> I, I I was so upset, and I was also really upset when Ellen took all of that heat for sitting at the game next to him the other day because I would I have. Agree. Oh, it was crazy. I felt like that was horrible, and people loved him when he was friends with Michelle, and they're mad at her because, you know, I guess sitting next to each other at a game is a big ordeal. But I did write to the Ellen show, and I'm not even joking, and I said, <laughs> I'm so sorry you're taking this flack. I love him. I have socks. I've got a framed eight by 10. I've got this cutout. I've got actually just to change into the sweater. I just took off a George W. Bush t-shirt. I'm not even kidding. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't wear it on the show because I thought that would be weird, but um, I've got a lot of, a lot of gear. So I felt her pain for sure. I, I must say, I mean, I've met people that like George W. Bush. I don't think I've ever met anybody who idolizes George W. Bush. <laughs> it's not even like an idolizing thing. It's honestly, I found a letter um, when I was in college that I had written in second grade to him. And thankfully my mom never mailed it because in hindsight, it was really weird. I wrote him a note that said like, hey George, what's up? It's me, I'm in second grade. How are things going? I love you. Would you like to sleep at my house? I have an extra bed. You're so important to me. And my mom was like, I think we need to get her to therapy right now. I had no idea that this existed. And then it kind of turned into a joke with my friends and it, then it perpetuated me really actually loving him. And here I am, you know, 20 years later. Wow. Uh, real, uh, real, real quick in the YouTube chat, I want to interrupt the interview that's going so well. Uh, <laughs> Dan, Dan Dry, Dreheim in the YouTube chat has renamed his uh, account Squirrely Dan Dreheim. Perfect. So there you go. Just Thank updating. you, Dan. <laughs> that's what Thank I you, appreciate Dan. about you. That's what I appreciate yeah. about him. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, well, George W. Bush. That's that's fantastic. I, so yes. I have to ask because we make old jokes all the time. I am the youngest of the the group. I am fifty eight years old. Uh, and he looks the I'm, oldest. Yeah, I, I look can't. The oldest. I can't see anything. So. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, no, it's right. good. It's good. Yeah, we're both uh, we're all here in our walkers and. Oh, know, good. Okay. Mothballs. What do you do with mothballs? I don't even know what to do with those things. They just eat up your closet. 
Uh, that's what it is. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to ask you, so you said you were in second grade when you wrote a letter to George W. Bush. Does that mean you yes. were in second grade when he was president? Um, I was I was eight, so I think he was just I probably just elected. I'd say it's 2000. So, yeah. Okay. Yep. That's okay. Okay. I just right. turned 27. That's not too bad. No. I'm, that's not too I'm, bad. What is that supposed no, to be? Well, I'm, I'm, I was I was worried because I'm like, man, mean? she's gonna she's because she has a younger looking face. So I thought, Thank uh oh, you. she's you know like nineteen, and no. we're all gonna sit here and feel old and bad about ourselves because oh, she never what? saw Brett Hall play. Are you gonna oh, comment? No. Are you gonna Are you gonna comment on her teeth? I she does have good teeth. Um, Thank you. I, that's oh. the Invisalign See, right women there. women love that compliment. And by the way, I've given that compliment to men, too. I, so I've, heard, to I've heard you give the compliment to another Yes. That's we were the in a best restaurant compliment. A, couple, a couple weeks ago, and I told the waitress she had very nice teeth, and I have not heard the end of it since then. That's it. I think that's a good – I love telling people they have good teeth and a good smile. That's, that's the best compliment you could give. Well, there you go. I got the STL yes. cup tracker on my side, Kurt. I'm not against I, I, it. I'm just, I think it's oh, funny. Yeah. I, you I know who sure else has do. great teeth? George W. Bush. The most beautiful uh. teeth ever. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yes. Would, you, right. would, you, have, would you have given that uh, waitress the compliment if your wife was sitting next to you? I would yes. have. I have. Oh, yeah. I have. <laughs> okay. I actually right. have. And I, right. I, I, I've given it to a man in front of her, and she just told me yeah, I'm very I weird. You've never told me that. <laughs> <I have. laughs> yeah, She's like, true. that's I never, weird. Well, there's a reason I've said it to you, Kurt. Oh, snap. <laughs> That's a burn. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Enough teeth, teeth talk. Enough yes. teeth talk. Uh, teeth talk with Jeff Potter. So, so I, wanted, I wanted to ask you, we talked about you starting the account, and obviously yes. you, know, you, you kind of have to be able to get tips. Um, mm -hmm. So when you started this account, how quickly were people starting to send you tips of where the cup was? Um, it took a long time, to be honest, to get good tips because the ones I heard, obviously, OB Clark's was easy right. because that was kind of growing. So I felt like that first week it was more like mass news where, you know, a lot of people knew that the cup would be going to wheelhouse. A lot of people knew it'd be kind of traveling to these big locations. I think um, after everything kind of died down a little bit, I started to get solid tips, I guess I'd say from people. And it would be, I actually thought about this after the fact, I didn't get very many false leads. I, I honestly don't think I really got any. Um, most people would tweet at me and they would, even if I thought it was a little fishy, it would be pretty legit. I think there's actually, there's one time that someone told me that the cup was going to be going to start bar at 2 AM and the person that tweeted it, you know, made it widespread, put it all over Instagram and then suddenly deleted it around midnight and it was like a Sunday. So mm. I think that was my only false lead that I got from it. Wow. So when did you, how quickly did you start the account after the blues one? So I started it the next morning and I first started it on Instagram. And then I realized that it was going to be really hard to start taking pictures of it. Mm -hmm. And I originally, my name there was blues cup tracker. And I deleted, I followed probably 600 people. I gained, I don't know, 200 followers in like an hour. And then I deleted that and switched to Twitter. And I switched to Twitter, I don't know, maybe, you know, an hour after I deleted it. And somebody had already taken my name that I did for Instagram. Um, Cause I oh. guess they, they saw that account. So it was kind of a battle of two accounts for a bit. Um, where they had a really big influx of followers heading their way, but they didn't really have a lot of tips on there. So um, obviously they stopped tweeting in like June when they got bored and the, this account prevailed. So that was exciting for me. Well, if it, if it means anything to you, I never saw another account. So obviously you did something right. Good. Thank you. It's all <laughs> about those hashtags. I'd hashtag everything like blues hashtag one the cup hashtag hockey and people would just that was a big part of getting some traffic i think to the account yeah i could imagine um so, so you obviously tweeted out a lot of events uh did you ever try to go any of those before um well we'll get to what happened at your <laughs> office later but uh, yes. did you ever try to go to one of those events before i wanted to make it down to the one at molly's 
um, I think that was three weeks ago, kind of when they did that little Soulard bar crawl. But to be honest, when I was tracking the accounts for, or the, the locations for everybody, I was constantly like glued to my phone and the thought of having to take 15 minutes to get in my car and then, you know, maybe in those 15 minutes, the cups already moved. It was just like, too stressful. And I said to myself, it's okay. You're going to see it another time. Find this for other people and um, you'll get your shot. So it was just, it freaked me out too much to have somebody have a missed opportunity because I wanted to go see it, to be honest. Yeah. Wow. That's uh, man, it's crazy. So obviously you, you go the whole summer tweeting and you mentioned yes. the other account kind of sputtered out. Um, mm -hmm. What made you just, I mean, what, what kind of kept you going to keep it going? Was it just that you kept gaining followers? I mean, what was it that motivated you? No, because there was a time where I kind of plateaued and I told myself there were so many times that I wanted to quit over the course of the summer. I was like, I don't like being glued to my phone all the time necessarily. Um, it stresses me out to have to find out where this thing is every hour. But then I said, you know, I made it this far. So many people have gotten to see it. I, I don't want to take that chance away from somebody else. And I really wanted to see it through, but I would be lying if I said I was not excited, um, for it to go back to Canada for a while. <laughs> so I was really looking forward to that day. So obviously, uh, right before, so uh, well, uh, I think everybody kind of knows what happened. Uh, that uh, you know, you had never seen the cup the entire summer. Um, yes. You kind of tweeted out like, "Hey, this is me, a picture of yourself. My name's Natalie, <laughs> and I still haven't seen the cup." And was it the next yeah. day or the day after that? Or it, I know it was pretty close to when the cup appeared at your office. It was. So I posted that because okay, so that Saturday where the cup was down in Soulard someone had tweeted at me saying, let's start a GoFundMe so that you can go to Canada and see it. And I am all about people saving their money and doing, you know, a random act of kindness for someone else. And I don't, I don't need the money. I not like that. I just don't, it's, there are better ways to put people's cash. So I tweeted and said, hold on to it, buy someone in line, a cup of coffee. I'm good. Like I'll see my chance. And a couple of hours later, the Blues messaged me on Twitter and said, hey, we saw the post about the GoFundMe. We thought it was really cool that, you know, you didn't want the money. Have you seen the cup? And I said, no, I haven't. Um, you know, I'll get my chance. And they said, can we have your email address? So I gave it to them. I didn't hear anything for a bit. And then um, I got an email from someone probably two hours later saying, what's your phone number? Where do you work? What's the best time to reach you, et cetera. We're going to see if we can set up a time to talk. So I got an email at 3 a.m. Sunday night. So the next day after I posted that picture, and it was from Steve Chapman, who's the nicest person I've ever met in my life. And he said, hey, the cup won't be available. Um, it's got an event from 8 to 6 at Enterprise, but we would love to do a quick you know, 10-minute interview at your office at 9 o'clock. And I had just happened to wake up, you know, two hours earlier that day or else I would have had like 15 minutes to scramble and um, <laughs> get ready. But I said, okay, you know, show up um, nine o'clock sounds perfect to me. And the, the day got kind of crazy from there. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, the, so you basically come to work and, yes. and walk us through what happens after you get out of your car that morning. Yeah. So my, I felt so bad about this. My mom actually had called me that morning and she said, I feel like I should go to this interview at work. And I said, mom, the cup is like not going to be there. It's got a pre-scheduled <laughs> event. I feel still so bad about this. Um, I said, it's absolutely not going to be there. And she said, are you sure? Like I just called off work. I want to swing by. So I sent her the email again that Steve sent me and it was very, it was very believable. And she's like, all right. Tell her, God, leave me alone, mom. God. I did. I was like, mom, like you can't sit there and be my hype man, like filming me with your iPhone of me getting an interview. Like, come on, mom, let me breathe. I'm a celebrity. Uh, but I was like, mom, don't cramp my style. So she, she stayed home and I showed up to work. And it was like 9.06. I'm really starting to sweat. And my bosses were all gone for the week. They were traveling out of town. And they're so upset about that too. But they were gone. There was just a couple of us in the office. And Steve came in by himself and he just like had his iPhone. 
And I'm like, okay. I thought, you know, like there'd be cameras, maybe a boom mic, maybe someone working on my hair. I don't know. And maybe the uh, entire blues team would be that's, here. That's what maybe I President thought. President George W. Bush. I mean, I expected <laughs> the red carpet, but uh, they, he showed up and he said, you know, I'm going to film this with my iPhone. I just want to ask you a couple questions about what you've done with the cup tracker. And then I'm going to send it back to the team at the enterprise center and they're going to splice it and all is going to be well. So I'm like, okay. And he said, can I do it in front of your coworkers? And I said, okay. So he's, you know, having my coworker film with his iPhone, our interview. And he basically said, you know, it was very short. He said like, hi, this is Natalie. I'm Steve. Natalie's been running this account and you know, what got you started in it? And I kind of told him a little bit about it. And then he said, has anyone ever given you a false lead on where the cup is? And I said, <clears throat> pardon me, I said, never. And he's like, so no one's ever deliberately told you it was going to be somewhere else that it wasn't. <laughs> and I was like, no, you know, and I didn't, I thought about this after the fact, but I was like, no, no, I You, you didn't pick everybody. up on where he was leading that too? No, not at all. Wow. And he was like, well, that's great. Okay, well, that's it. Um, you know, are you going to be around all day today at work? And I said, oh, I was like, oh, yeah, I've got a dentist appointment. And he, I said, my mom would really like to see the cup. You know, could you tell me what time it's coming? She lives 10 minutes away. And he said, ah, oh, no, I can't. You know, like, we're, we're going to try to get it to you after work. Can you come drive downtown to see it? And I was like, yeah, of course. Can I bring all my friends? And he said, yeah, definitely. Great. <laughs> so he leaves. And I think 10 minutes pass. And I'm like sweating. I'm like, my God, I sound like such an idiot. And I'm saying to my coworkers, like, everyone's going to see me on an iPhone. And I just look like terrible, blah, blah, blah. And this probably went on for literally eight to 10 minutes where I'm just like upset about how I sounded. And I just accepted it. I'm sitting at my computer doing some emails, grab my coffee. I turn around and the cup was right there at the door. And oh. I, so he totally pulled one over on me. I had a complete meltdown. The very first thing I said is, oh my God, my mom, I wish yeah. I would have told her to come. I felt so bad. He said, I know. He said, that was the first thing I thought of when you said you know, what time he's like, I couldn't tell you obviously that I was surprising you, but you've got 10 minutes with the cup, take your picture and then, um, it's gotta go. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So she, she understood. It was completely mind blowing. I, I, th I was like just shaking and I thought I was going to like throw up in the cup, which I'm sure has happened a lot of times, <laughs> but it was just the absolute best day ever. Yeah, Chris Draper. So. Uh, what he had a he had a baby uh, uh, go number two in it. Did he not? N yes. No, he did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. <laughs> yeah. Oh yep. my god! I don't think yep. it was on purpose. It just happened. I no, know. <laughs> no. He put his he put his uh, newborn baby in there without a diaper, and it just went to town. Oh my! Oh god! Well, I kissed the side of it, so I think we're good. Yeah, there. I think you're good. You're good. Oh well, my Well, just god. think about it. I uh, was it. Well, who was it? Pat Maroon eating toasted ravs out of there. And they ate like uh, poop, what is it? Pout poutine, whatever poutine, the fries yeah, with the gravy is. Out of it. Yep, yeah, yep. That that's true. Good. You think mm -hmm. about all the places that cup has been, and my goodness. It's kind of uh, crazy. So I want to ask you about, I mean, obviously you're, you, you're a blues fan. How long have you been a fan? I've been a fan my whole life. I um, have gone to games since I probably was seven or eight. And then in high school, I think freshman year is when I really started, you know, it was more about the nachos when I was a kid, to be honest. Um, and then when I was in high school is when I really started following all the NHL teams, getting really involved, um, trying to go to all the home games I could when I was in high school, mooching tickets off of friends. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's been a long, long fun ride with, as you guys have experienced a lot of frustrations along the way, but it ultimately paid off. Yeah. No, and that's uh, that was a conversation I had in one of our summer shows was uh, we talk about, you know, trades, you know, well, who won this trade? Who won that trade? And, yeah. and I'm, like, I'm like, hey, the Blues have won every single trade because it led to a Stanley Cup. That's the <laughs> they way I did. see it. There was yep. a lot of qu questionable times. I was really upset about the trade for of TJ Oshie. Um, I right. loved, loved TJ Oshie. That was like my dude for a very long time. I still am very bummed out about Ryan Reeves. I like, I like the outcome, obviously, but Ryan Reeves was one of my favorite guys too. So 
you know, there, there have been some ones I've been bummed, but as you said, they've all led to a nice little Stanley cup. Yeah, right. Exactly. Natalie, this is, this has been awesome. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, I know we had some technical difficulties, some technological differences, as we like to say on the show, uh, yes. to uh, to start everything. But I'm glad we got it all worked out and we got you on. And um, if anything you want to plug, anything at all, if you want to just plug your Twitter account, anything, go yeah. ahead. We'll, we'll give you all the time you need. Oh, you're awesome. Well, I would love if you guys still followed my account at um, you know STL Cup Tracker. Um, you know, I'm going to try to keep up on it. I will be at the Hockey Fights Cancer Night on November 1st at the Friends of Kids with Cancer table. So if you guys want to stop by, say hello. I'd like to meet some of you guys and um, hear your stories. And then I will be tweeting about my experience at the Flames game on the 21st as I will start with the morning skate, um, kind of see how the digital – uh, media team works from the ground up and then I will get to be in the press box for that game. Thanks to Steve Chapman and the St. Louis blues for that. So they are making my dream come true and I will keep you guys updated, but give me a follow there. Instagram, Natalie Condon, and that's it. Yeah, Natalie, I, I started to tell you this story and I'm going to tell it now live on air. And I know I've told this story on the show before, but my first experience in the press box I was told by a fellow media member, Andy Strickland, name drop. Yes. That, um, <laughs> that, uh, to, and he was real cool. You know, he sat down next to me and he said, hey, here's, here's the expectations of the press box. Told me, you know, hey, you know, there's no cheering, right? And I said, yeah, of course. He said, yeah. well, I'm just going to stress that to you. No cheering. And I said, that's fine. So this was the first game that David Perron came back after his concussion. Yes. And uh, Perron scored in that game. It was against the Blackhawks. He scored the oh, first yeah. goal of the game. And I looked around. I'm sitting there trying to contain my excitement. And all of a sudden, I see everyone around me, including Blackhawks reporters, standing up and clapping. And I'm like, I look at Andy Strickland. I'm like, what the hell, man? Yeah. And he's just like, oh, no, now it's okay. And I'm like, oh, my God. Where was this five minutes yeah. ago? That's so, yeah, it was, it. Uh, yeah, it was, and obviously it was a, a very special situation. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it's funny that, that I was stressed oh that. God. First right. goal, just David Perron. No <laughs> cheering, even when someone who really deserves something gets it, just don't yep. cheer, okay? It's not classy. Yep, so keep That's that in it. mind. If a player returns from 100 games and scores a goal, that you are allowed to stand up and cheer for that. You, you won't even see a smile from me. I'm going to be just <laughs> sitting there tight-lipped and super angry. So Of course, of course. No Natalie, this, we, we appreciate you coming on. Good luck with everything with uh, the Flames game. And if you happen to get your hands on a leukemia hat at Hockey Fights Cancer Night, you let me know. I definitely will. And thank you guys for having me. And um, this has been so much fun. So I really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you very much. And thank you yeah. for all the work you've done for St. Louis. Thank you, guys. Let's go Blues. Let's go blues. Let's go blues. Let's go All blues. right. See ya. See ya. See ya. Bye. Well, uh, I, you, Jeff, you missed an opportunity. What's that? To say we appreciate you. Ah! <laughs> Get her back on. Oh, Let's fail. Let's do this. Fail. <laughs> Just tweet her. Just tweet at her. That's what I'm going to do. Good call. Uh, that was good. Good <clears throat> stuff. No, it was nice for her to come on. She, uh, we had talked a couple weeks ago, and the cup was at uh, Fast Eddie's, and I had just kind of mentioned that uh, something about Let's Go Blues Radio. She goes, "Oh yeah, I've heard of you guys," and I'm like, "Would you want to come on?" And she was very excited about it. So very cool, cool to have her on. Yeah, <clears throat> great stories, and yeah, Dennis Quaid, George W. Bush. That's, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I love it. <laughs> That interview definitely went in a couple directions. Uh, yeah, no, that, those, it too. those are the best kind. Those <laughs> right. are the best kind. And that's that's why we love live podcasts. Yes. That's right. Uh, who else does a show like that? Nobody. No one does a show like that. Teal Town, uh, USA. A Teal Town. Even they don't we do a show like that. We love those guys. No, they're, they're good no, guys. They don't. They're terrible. No. <laughs> no, they're, they're, very, they're very nice guys. <laughs> they are. Okay, you're right. How dare I? Uh, the official beers of episode 222. I'm like I'm I'm way past my first one. Me too. <laughs> what do you got, Bill? I'm what, dumb. What was I your first one? Grabbed, I only grabbed one. What was I thinking? So my first one, and oh. I've been meaning to ask if you have had this. I have not had Love Gun. <laughs> Love Gun. What, that's four hands. No. Oh, heavy riff. Okay. Heavy riff. 
Vanilla, Vanilla cream, cream ale. Sounds good. So the first time I had this was at um, the uh, what's the the place that took over Bear and Bull. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know what I was talking about. Yes, they, they had it on tap, and I'm like, it's I, Bull and Bear, but whatever. It, it's <laughs> nothing anymore. They closed down. They left well, too. No, Bull and Bear. I know. I thought. No. I think with the new place left. I'm like, what? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> anyway. This is like an episode of Three's Company with just two of us. It is. It is. Because <laughs> we could ignore Jeff for a while. <laughs> it's one big misunderstanding. <clears throat> anyway, so I we went there and I ordered it. And I'm like, I, I didn't read the description or anything. I'm like, eh, sounds like it'd be okay. And then drinking it, drinking it, I'm like, man, this this tastes like some. What, what does this taste like? Tastes, tastes like, like a love cream gun. Cream soda. <laughs> And that's yeah, it's vanilla cream ale. It's it's nice. Um, so uh, their tagline for Heavy Riff is ales that go to eleven. Okay. I kind of wish they would have stuck with the um, this is Spinal Tap motif for right. the name. It's so Love Gun is a, a Kiss album, right? So they're they're all about you know old school rock and roll. Love Pump. That's what I wanted to do. Lick my love pump? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. I knew where you were going with that. With lick, just lick love me, pump. Lick me love pump. Lick me love pump. I just call it love pump. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. I I could see strategic reasons why you wouldn't want to do that. Something you're selling to a mass market. But yeah. I would have I would have appreciated them more. I appreciates. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I appreciate about them. Uh, and then my second beer is the Surly that I've had in your fridge. Yep. Sur- Furious. It's been in the fridge since first show of the season. It's nice and cold. So I, I want to point out. It is nice. That- Bill has had the day off today. Bill, how many beers have you had throughout the day? Um, not so many beers. So uh, the golf course was actually uh, the hard stuff. Oh, not beer, but yeah, yeah. So uh, it was the liquor variety. Yes, and then uh, afterwards we uh, hit Global Brew O'Fallon uh, had uh, had a couple of beers, and uh, yeah, and then a couple hours off. Here I am back at it. <laughs> Jeff, what's yours? Uh, well, my beer of the episode was, uh, we talked last week about pumpkin beer and how Oktoberfest <laughs> seems to be passed up. Uh, this week, I went with uh, an Oktoberfest from Schlafly. Wait, I need to get my camera down. There we go. Uh, yeah, so uh, Oktoberfest from Schlafly. Um, any Oktoberfest is good. Honestly, I don't think I've ever had a bad Oktoberfest, but if you're going to get one, Go local, and Schlafly is definitely a good one. Uh, I went with a pumpkin. I bought the pumpkin variety pack from O'Fallon Brewery. And, uh, yeah, so I, my first one was the O'Fallon uh, pumpkin pecan pie, which uh, it was, was pretty good. I liked it. It was uh, – but but I, and so I finished that one up, and I've followed up with the O'Fallon salted caramel pecan uh, uh, pumpkin beer. Because I really enjoyed 4204's salted caramel, a salted caramel that they have. Uh, but man, O'Fallon's, how would you describe that, Bill? Like pure caramel? or mm-hmm. uh, Right. Man, that was right. way too sweet. Yeah. Holy I, cow. I, I did not Agreed. detect any beer in there. It was, I mean, I, I, I enjoy a desserty beer, but holy shnikes, that was, that was too much. I, yeah. I almost was like, I'm going to finish this beer? This is did ridiculous. Did you have the s'mores one yet? The s'mores? Yeah. I have this. No, I have not. This is my first two out of the pack. How's the s'mores? Uh, I'll let you decide. <laughs> <laughs> not as good? I, I like I just, the, I, the pecan I, pie I'm was not good. a fan of a lot of, I mean, the, the that one's not bad, but I'm just, if I'm going to have a pumpkin beer, I just want a pumpkin beer. Like it, it, the other ones are that they're, they're releasing. They're okay. I mean, if you haven't they're tried sweet. them, They're sweet. They're so them. sweet. They're just it, so sweet. Yeah, and you I can't. Just, it's just not my palate. See, when I drink, I drink to get drunk, and you can't get drunk on these because you don't want any more after one. It's like after a yeah, half right. one, I'm like, I'm done. I don't want any more of these. They're so just, yeah. I I love to see the calories in the salted caramel one. It's got to be like, it's got to be a few hundred at least, right? Man, yeah. hey, look, look it up, Bill. <laughs> Google it. I'm not gonna Google it. Anyway, uh, today in blues history. Courtesy of the at STL Blues History Twitter account, October twenty third, two thousand nineteen, 
Uh, today's date, so October 23rd, 2015, the original St. Louis Blues and former captain Jimmy Roberts passed away four years ago today. Roberts was scheduled to drop the puck the next day. One of the most underrated and underappreciated Blues players and person in franchise history. I do believe that was an anecdote put in there by uh, Mr. STL Blues History. You mean that's not a fact? I mean, that's, I mean you, can, you can almost chalk it up as a fact, but that's an opinion statement, right? That's uh, one of my favorite quotes from Parks and Recreation was when uh, somebody was being interviewed and the interviewer said, uh, now that is my opinion, and that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, Jimmy Roberts was the man. I, it's funny because when I was a kid, you know, and he, was, he used to be the Blues assistant coach back in the was that late 90s. Um, I, uh, I knew him. My brother and I called him because he looked like a guy, and, and God rest his soul, but – he looked like a guy who should be eating a hoagie at all times. And so my brother and I called him the hoagie man. So every time we saw Jimmy Roberts, we would, we would say, hey, it's the hoagie man. And uh, now, of course, I feel like a dick saying that. But uh, no, I, from what I heard about my, from my dad about his playing days, tough customer, guy you didn't want to mess with. And uh, of, of course, a true St. Louis blue, just like Bobby Plager was. Is is <laughs> wow, you're writing him <laughs> off already? Yeah, Holy yeah. Cow. sorry, Bobby. We love you, man. Jeez, man. <laughs> I'm, just uh, gonna, I'm just gonna go now, guys. You guys got the rest of the show, right? October 23rd, 1995, Brett Hull was stripped of the captaincy of the St. Louis Blues by uh, head coach Mike Keenan. Shane Corson was named the new captain. You know what? You just don't, you do not see, and there's an article, a news article, uh, clipping that uh, accompanies the tweet. And uh, I for I, I I you forget how conflicting their relationship was, how how poisonous their relationship was. Because I mean, in the paper, I mean, Keenan said he's just a hockey player now. I mean, about Hall uh, after taking the C away, and then Hall called it. Uh, Hall said, uh, "The heck, not uh, Keenan said it wasn't personal," and Hall said, "The heck, it isn't personal." Uh, it is personal. It's a complete slap in the face. If I had done something to deserve it, it was just, I mean, back and forth. It's nuts. Yeah, they were, that was bad. Uh, yeah. You know, it's funny. You talk about captains with STL Blues history. Um, he has a pretty good history of what the Blues captains actually is. If you look at the website, they've got some people on the Blues website listed as captain that weren't even with the team at the time they were listed as captain. Yeah, and he was he had a big push to include someone that they left off who was a captain for a very short time. Yep. And they just they didn't uh, – the, the, the canvases they gave away, which I have hanging up here, of all the captains in Blues history, there's some left off. Oh, yeah. The, those, that, well, that, that triptych of canvases say... that they, deliver, they uh, put out a few years ago. There was one person who uh, is listed as a pretty prominent captain that was never actually a captain. And if you want to ask who that is, you ask STL Blues History, because I do not want to start stirring that pot. What? Tell me. Tell us. Apparently, Bob Plager was never actually a captain. The photo that they use on that, if you look that picture up, he actually has an A on his sweater. Oh, really? In that canvas. Uh, oh, that's, yeah. That's he's, a he's, right, photo. he's right up front by, uh, by Pronger. And Federico. Apparently, he was never actually a captain, although he would tell you he was a captain. Uh, okay. Yeah. So apparently, that's a that's a big big uh, point uh, in Blues history that's very questioned. So Mandela on ho- effect, I guess, right? On hockey reference, what does it say? I mean, does it it lists all the captains, right? Uh, that would you think? Yeah, that he's would... listed on there. Oh, that's okay. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. And the plot thickens. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, how is it? Uh, why? How is it so difficult to? Maybe they know they have to know it, right? And they just—I mean, it's just like an honorary thing. They, oh, we're gonna—he's just—we'll just leave it as is. I don't know. Something I'll never understand. Uh, October twenty-third, nineteen eighty-seven. Two people were charged in th- in the theft of St. Louis Blues equipment from a truck parked outside Brentwood Ice Rink. Brentwood Ice Rink is where they used to uh, hold training camp. They used to be their practice practice facility and them. training camp right. too. So I want, and th- th- I included this. I wouldn't normally include something like this because it's not really a, a huge thing. But, uh, but I, I, it, this doesn't surprise me whatsoever because I went to the Blues training camp uh, when it was in Brentwood, and one time I walked around. My cousin and I walked around back. We we walked out of the front doors and came around the side and went around back. And it's not a big place, 
And there was a door wide open in the back. We walked in the back door, and there was like half a dozen duffel bags full of Blues equipment. Blues duffel bags. You know, logos on them and everything, and just like sitting there. Nobody around. Nobody protecting any of it. And it's like, yeah, I could just walk out with a Blues duffel bag full of stuff and have a, a bunch of players' gear. And, and apparently so, Brian M. Hart and Sean Buckman, both 19 at the time, thought that was a good idea. Well, they broke into a car. They actually, a locked car. So that's a, a van. So that's a little a truck. Okay, so, so... That's a little different. So that's a little different. A little different. And, and that's breaking it. Had they, had they been as smart as you and your cousin... Yes. ...they didn't have to break into anything. No. We didn't take anything either, but, I mean, this uh-huh. just... It was... Uh-huh. We had... Likely we, story. Well, you know, we're kids, and we're standing there like, wow. I mean, we could take this if we wanted to, but we did not. Uh... October 23rd, 1979, Wayne Babbage recorded his first career hat trick. Mike Lute made his first NHL uh, made his NHL debut as the St. Louis Blues came back from four goals down to earn a tie with the Boston Bruins. So Wayne Babbage, they uh, he was in town. Uh, he was at the uh, the game Saturday. Um, I was at the game Saturday. Yeah. Um, but Are they Wayne did Babbage? it. I I maybe he held but, the uh, Blues record for goals by right winger before Hull broke it. Yep, yeah he uh, yeah so they they did a, a nice little interview in between periods and um, he showed some good highlight packages. Mm-hmm. He was he was one of my one of my favorite Blues back in the day. I mean Lee Federico were my top two, but Babbage was probably the third. I have a couple of actually decent Wayne Babbage stories. Didn't he net 50 one year? He did. He did, yeah. He did. He got fi- exactly 50, right? Yeah. I think. He did. But it was it was awesome to see him um, back in town on the Jumbotron. Looks exactly like Wayne Babbage. You would expect him to look at 60 or whatever he is now. So, very cool. Uh, the uh, There's a story by Tom Timmerman in stltoday.com. Uh, about, I thought this was kind of cool. I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at this. Uh, it was uh, kind of behind the scenes at Game 7, like the, the goings-on uh, with the Blues scratches and the Black Aces that were there uh, to in, in the locker room in the closing minutes of Game 7 when they kind of, they kind of okay, we're probably going to win the Cup. So they, they go into the locker room. And there's all kinds of uh, interesting little quotes and, and stories about how you know players are asking, do, do, what do I wear? Do I, do, I, do I wear a cup? Do I wear shin guards? Because they got dressed in equipment to go out there and celebrate with the team when they won. And because uh, I think Steen has made a comment earlier in the playoff, or, well, uh, earlier in the final, I guess, uh, where he said that, you know, it's not, it, it's all it's all the players that have won this cup, not just the guys on the ice and uh, the guys that are dressed. It's everyone contributed all season long. So uh, so they wanted even Huso out there, even a guy who didn't uh, start any games, but he was, Part of the team and practice at times, and he, you know, he he helped the team prep uh, for uh, playoff games, and whatnot. So they they had him out there, uh, and and it was interesting because uh, Huso made a comment, and it was in the article about, uh, do you think it's okay if I go out there? I mean, I didn't, you know, and I thought mm-hmm. that too when I saw Huso out there. I'm mm-hmm. like, right. why, why is Huso? Out? Why is he holding the right. cup up? I mean, it's, it, I'm not that I was against it. I'm just like that kind of kind of took me back. I'm like, well, he didn't he didn't he didn't ever play, and. Uh, so, but, and then, uh, uh, I think Thorburn said, uh, no, get out there. You're, you're, you know, you're celebrating. So he was okay. So, uh, and yeah, I, that I, was, I, that was neat. My favorite part was, uh, what Butler was saying. And, and it's funny because, you know, he says, you're trying to find socks. So take my gloves out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, do I skate out with no pads? Take my shin pads, not take my <laughs> shin pads. I mean, it, <laughs> right. it's funny. What do I do? You think of, you think about it and that's exactly how the three of us would be. That's how anybody would be. You're thinking, Okay, do I just go through this like I'm going out there to play a game, or do I just put the bare minimum on? I mean, you know, when the guys are taking their pads off, do I want to be showing that I taped my shin guards too? You know, all that stuff's running through your head, but at the same time, you got to think, well, I really shouldn't be planning this out because what if something crazy happens? Can and you imagine how the jinx did? Can you imagine how goofy it, it, the players would look without shin guards skating out there? Mm-hmm. It looked kind of yeah. weird. <laughs> it would look so yeah. weird. <laughs> uh, like a goalie without pads. Yeah. It's, yeah. And they said that the, a lot of players didn't even tie their skates. Yeah. They just, you know, cause, because they stopped, they stopped getting ready when the last goal was scored, and they just watched. So that's uh, it's yeah. pretty cool. It's neat. Uh, check it, check it out. Uh, Tom Timmerman's story, stltoday.com. 
uh, it's uh, it's kind of neat. Just, just stuff, stuff you don't might not think about or you, or you wonder about, like like I did. You know, it was like, what's going through their minds or uh, what's the thought process or the discussion as far as who goes out there for guys that didn't play a minute this season for the Blues? But they're out there celebrating with the Cup. So that was interesting. Uh, some stats about the uh, Stanley Cup after the Blues won it. I figure this was uh, rather semi-appropriate with uh, Natalie being on the show. Um, it, it crossed three continents uh, after the Blues won it uh, in celebrations. They visited five countries, eight Canadian provinces, 13 U.S. states, traveled uh, 40,000 miles, which means it circled the globe one and a half times. It was seen by an estimated at 1.35 million people. Um, food and drinks cons- consumed by the cup, uh, toast ravioli, Ted Drew's custard, gooey butter cake, salad, french fries, poutine, pasta, Alex Petrangelo's Nana's pasta, <laughs> cereal, Sprite, Dairy Queen Blizzard, adult beverages, you know, beer, champagne, scotch, gin, bourbon, Molly Bozak's margaritas, uh, peach schnapps, raw squid, and uh, uh, which Roby the sea lion at the St. Louis Zoo ate uh, the raw squid. Which it brings me to a question with the with the drinking out of the cup. Um, there was a comment made by, I forgot who it was, that said, if you aren't a player that won the cup, you, you can't drink out of it. And I'm like, well, that's not true. That's right, happened not. every, I mean, every party it goes to. Right. I saw a video yeah. of the Blues players the night, or the, what, the night they won it. Uh, passing, to have, it passing on to fans drinking stuff right. out of it at the bar. There, Layla, right? what about Layla? She drank Layla out, drank of, it, out of it. At, Mo, at uh, Molly Bozak's party, margaritas. Right. Everybody, people, it's a, she, right. Pat it's a celebration for Pat everyone in, in the, the players' lake. lives. And not Telegraph Road. <laughs> they were all yeah. drinking. Right. Yeah, that, that, that comment they made was just stupid. You, you don't have to have won the cup to drink out of it. I mean, it, it, no. you know, that's weird. Once you win the it's cup, good. you share it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're and, at the party. Oh, my God. Right. It's, it's, you know, the, the whole thing, you know, you touched on it earlier in, in the interview with Natalie, but the, the whole thing about fans, you know, fans having the rules about not being able to touch it, you know, no, no. Yeah. No. I, I, if, it, no and, if you're a fan and you don't want to, that's fine. That's on, mm-hmm. that's, that's on you. You don't want to. That's probably fine. But I think the issue that I had with people that were criticizing others for touching it, you know what I mean? That that bugged me. I was like, ah, you know, you're not. Don't if that's your that's your thing. That's fine. But don't go telling other people how to how to right. superstition. Fabry's hair. We're here for you, bud. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the uh, the Blues went one one and one since our last show on the 16th. Uh, they lost to Vancouver four three in a shootout. <clears throat> Fabry got his first uh, goal of the season. Uh, we blew another two goal lead. Uh, lost in an extended shootout. Uh, Josh Levo scored. Um, the only goal of the shootout. And the only goal. And the 12, the, he was the 12th shooter and in the shootout. And fell on his face as soon yes. as he shot the puck. Yeah. Pretty looking goal. Yeah. A uh, nice move. Uh, I thought Bennington played it pretty well. It was just, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, O'Reilly was really the only one that, that was close for the Blues. Hit the post. Yeah, and I agree. Yeah. Out. Yeah. It was Vancouver's Demko was a solid goalie, but they they did him some favors. Yeah. They yeah. Did. They, I mean, it, most of those shots didn't seem... Yeah, the best Perron shot. Perron rolled shot. off his stick. Steen, you know, tried to go forehand, backhand, and stuff. Yep. Yeah. No. Uh, Tarasenko mishandled, didn't he, completely? Who, somebody mishandled no, completely. No, that was Perron. It was, was it Perron? Perron? Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And and I've said this before. I do not like Tarasenko in the shootout. I never have. And I just don't think they keep going back to him because he's a sniper, which I get, but it's like he's never – I don't know. I'd like to look up his stats. I actually meant to you before the show, and I forgot, but – I, I know they're not good. He's never been that solid in the shootout. I think he had one or two maybe <laughs> good shootout goals. Other than that, it's usually somebody else who scores for the Blues. <clears throat> uh, the uh, next game on the tap was Montreal uh, in St. Louis, the second uh, against Montreal earlier in the season. Uh, we Bill was at this game. Yes, I was. Yes, and was. Uh, so he was yeah. like half happy at the final. <sighs> no, it. it <laughs> Typically, like typically, when I approach this game, it's like, you know, it's a it's a win for me, whatever way. But the way that the Blues played and the way that they lost, it's and fucking embarrassing. It, it's fucking embarrassing. I, I so <clears throat> go back to last year, the game uh, Montreal was in town, and uh, early on in the the uh, Bennington streak. 
Uh, I think it was his second or third game. First home game after they he uh, he took over. Um, <clears throat> wore my Carey Price jersey. And we sat down in section 121. I got up on the Jumbotron um, as the lookalike for the ugly Ronaldo statue is <laughs> awful. So so I, I wore my Habs, so Habs gear that day. I, I don't really care, right? When it comes to this game, I, I wanted the Blues to win this game. I, I wore my Blues attire this weekend. Um, and they just looked awful. It was a bad game. And, God, yeah. it, it was it was not a good game. Uh, I mean, historically, they're not good in early starts. I mean, yeah, you know, we've this is already our second afternoon game of the year, and we're barely three weeks in. Um, they, I mean, they shot wise, they were fine, but it just they. Uh, Allen got his second start of the season. Price was enough for Montreal. Uh, I think the highlight of the game for the Blues was Schwartz's goal. Yeah, I mean, it was a nice goal, yeah. real nice right. goal. Yeah, it was. Right, and uh, it was pretty much right in front of us. I mean, we were upstairs, but we were in the uh, zone where the Blues shoot twice. Um, and, yeah, it, it was it was reminiscent to me of the Sammy Blaze goal against Carey Price in Montreal, where Price just kind of gives, doesn't really pay attention to what's going on after he makes the initial save and just – isn't as quick to cover it and somebody just throws a lazy backhand at the net and it goes in. Um, I thought Jake Allen had a very strong first period. Yeah. Thought, hey, I, this is, he's, he's playing well tonight. He's battling. And then six seconds into the second period. Yeah. And, and, uh, and that's, uh, you know, what's sad about that goal is that, um, this this kind of uh, shit from Allen uh, doesn't surprise me anymore when it happens. It's like, mm. oh, there it is. okay, we were due for that. I mean, that's, yeah. he was he was having a good first period. Now he's due for that. Um, I so it's the kind of nonsense that happens, and and it's why realistic and and I my opinion, realistic and honest Blues fans will never fully trust in him anymore. Um, even if he's playing well, you just know a major fuck up is going to, is going to come and uh, more often than most goalies have, you know, because it, because shitty goals, worst goal of his NHL career, Bill, uh, Bill yeah. tweeted that out. Yeah. And, I, uh, and, and I agree with him. Well, well it's, th- it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's right there. Five. It's right it's, there. It is top four. It's cause I, I responded to it with uh, the Parise goal against Minnesota, that goal from the corner right that in, oh, a, yeah. in, a, in an elimination in, game and contextually that's that's got to be the worst well, one but i mean but but right. but still this one if you just take away the contextuality of it <laughs> the moment uh, the contextuality uh of it <laughs> or which, just context or take the context out of it yes that's that's better uh <laughs> Uh, the 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 goal against Montreal is is worse. It's yeah. just it's it's just it's worse. A miss. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just it, a complete it, miss. It, it, yeah. And yeah. and you know what? That kind of goal happens to every goalie. Problem with Allen is that that kind of goal happens to him more often. Right. It's just it's just it. Yeah. So and just at bad time, six seconds into the second period, he wasn't of a ready. One game. Right. He wasn't. He just not ready. Yeah, as a goalie, you know, starting us starting a period, like you want to get that touch, you want to get an early touch. He his head was not there, and it was going wide, wasn't it? He it was going wide, and he went to kind of sweep it with his stick, and yeah. it, it went off the heel of his stick, and kind of in the goal. Yeah, he it, was it he was, was angling his stick up, which I'm like, what are you doing? Like, hold your stick like a fucking man. Uh, it was it, it was no awful. Sense. So terrible all around. So if you uh, if you went to the game Monday, not that I'm skipping too far ahead here, but if you went to the game or you follow Gabe Tybe on Twitter, uh, they uh, had a, a yes. the look alike for Monday's game time. Oh, great. Ryan Gosling and Jake <laughs> Allen. Yep. And the caption, the caption was the best part. The caption was made it. So Ryan Gosling is probably not qualified to be an NHL goaltender. And Jake Allen is probably not qualified <laughs> to be an NHL goaltender. <laughs> so true, and they look alike. It's it was beautiful. Yeah, they do. It was it was. I think. Yeah. I think that. I mean, anybody who 
doesn't really think that this is who Jake Allen is. I mean, right. he's going to have peaks and valleys. He's going to go on stretches where he has, you know, where he plays well. But he's also going to have games like this and then where he struggles uh, for half a dozen games in a row. Uh, I think he's. this is his eighth season in the NHL. This is who he is. He's not going to all of a sudden become this tackle the number one job and take it over for a season and a half or two seasons straight. He's not going to do it. He's, he's not. He's, he's not still that guy. learning, Kurt. He's still he, learning. He's, he's, it's only his eighth season. You know what? Uh, our friend Lance uh, from the Dot Podcast made an interesting claim over the weekend after this game of all times. After this game, he said Jake Allen was a great goalie his first four years in the NHL. And, great um, being the key word. Yeah, I mean, serviceable. Yes. Great. No. 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 I. I, I don't. I mean, great. You got to be a top ten in the league to or around thereabouts to be great, right? So in his first four years in the league, run the numbers off, minimum 50 games played. He's 31st in save percentage, 20th in GAA, 20th in shutouts, 42nd in shorthanded save percentage, 46th in even strength save percentage, 8th in power play save percentage. But he's right there for, you know, all-time wins in franchise history, which is because. The- you right, know, he's because, been, he's this is, he's played more seasons with the Blues than any other goalie. The right, Blues have had. eight. He's eight. He, that's a lot. Right for Blues, that's a lot. Right, it no, is a lot. Yeah, it's, it's really, it is a lot. Uh, apart from Mike Leute, and Mike Leute was gone in what? I mean, he came up seventy nine. We covered that at the beginning of the show. That was his first first game was seventy nine. He was gone by eighty six. Jake Allen has has had the tenure. Curtis Joseph jettisoned after what he came up 91 and gone in 96 so yeah jake is the only guy that has been given tenure and it and he well my response it. my response to you kurt when when you kind of made us aware of of lance's comment was in those four years how many times was he handed the starting job and he still lost it it wasn't just a matter of well, his numbers were average or, you know, whatever. It's, okay, backup goalie, expected to be the backup goalie, came in and took the job from him. And I know that you can Every look time. and say Carter Hutton didn't do that, but he did. Carter he Hutton did. deserved oh, that starting Oh, God did. Oh, yeah, yes, he, he did. did. He was, Hutton was leading the league in save percentage and goals against average for most of the season. Uh, and he rightfully got most of the starts for the yeah, bulk, but he the better part of two he months. He didn't start the most important game of the season for the Blues. That's what somebody he, did. He well, didn't start, Jake Allen would tell you. He didn't start against Chicago, allowed that bad that uh, Duncan Keith goal late in the game, uh, and he didn't start against uh, Colorado. So Which Jake played well against Colorado. He did. He, did. That, he played a good game. Uh, still, he, he played uh, good. Yeah, no, I, I, he lost his job to Elliott. He lost it to to Hutton, and obviously he lost it to Bennington. The uh, tint advisor, not to spend too much time talking about Allen because we, but uh, tint advisor uh, on uh, Twitter. Uh, also made a comment, no matter how well 34 plays in St. Louis, it won't matter. Fans don't like him. Would I love for him to be moved for anything? Yes. Do I see him with the Blues un- until his contract is up? Probably. I don't think he's an awful goalie. That can help a team as a backup. Now, to say that uh, to say that he, it won't matter how he plays in St. Louis because fans don't like him, fans don't like him because of how he plays in St. Louis. Yeah, that, 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 he's got it backwards. Um, if Jake Allen were a miracle were to happen and he were to play like a number one goalie and be a great goalie, as Lance says he was, which he wasn't, but if he were to become that great goalie and be a top 10 in the league goalie uh, for a year, two years straight, fans would love him. Fans want to win. If he wrestled the job away from Bennington and became the number one for two straight years and, and uh, finished out his contract, uh, top 10 in the league over those two years, fans would love him. Yeah. I agree. That's we all know that's not going to happen. That's not Jake mm-hmm. Allen. No, that's not who he is. We just so anyway, Garrett. Go. No, I'm just I'm I'm backing you up, sir. Yep. I think yeah, no, that it, uh, it doesn't. I mean, it, yeah, you could say that all you want, but it, it the reason he can say that is because it'll never be pro- It'll never be unproven. It'll never he'll never be the guy that'll step in and bring the Blues another cup. So yeah, it's easy to sit here and say, oh, fans won't like him because he's never going to be that guy. Well. He's never going to be that guy, so there's no way to prove your your comments. <laughs> uh, annoying. But you can prove he was not great in his first four seasons. 
that's that's, that's something you can. I mean, I guess what you I I guess if your definition of great is very lax, uh, that's the only way. This Louis show is great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second period in this game, Montreal scores uh, three goals in the second period to essentially put the game out of reach. Uh, Perron scored with uh, the goalie pulled, and then uh, Weber scored with an empty net goal. On an empty net goal. Uh, 15, yeah. 15 seconds to go. Colton Pareko. Giveaway. Bad pass. Yeah. Terrible. Like just, he, just, he basically passed it to Weber. Yeah, he I did. mean, the game was over anyway, yeah. but... Whatever. Yeah. Right. No. It it was it was bad. Um. I mean, I I will say I thought Montreal's power play was just clicking on all cylinders. Um. Between Domi and Kakaniemi, they have some great setup guys on that roster. And you I mean, as Packer a Canadian, Yammy, right? What's that? Packer Yami. That's who you meant, right? No. No. Yes, Barry Kakaniemi. Get it right, <laughs> Packer <Jeff>. Yami. <laughs> Radio at Don Cherry calls it blues at radio. <laughs> let's go. Dot com. Yeah. Um, so uh, tonight, uh, Elise Butler, the blues uh, social media uh, girl, tweeted out Natalie. Yeah. No. Oh, oh, oh. Elise. Elise. Elise, Elise oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. The, the official blues. The official. Where, yes. Sorry, right. Sorry. She tweeted out, and I didn't realize this, but so apparently Minnesota has uh, Minnesota. called up on a, an emergency basis a goalie named Capo Kakinen, and so we have the. And she said, "I need to see a penalty shot or shootout situation between Capo Kako and Capo Kakinen." <laughs> I love Finnish names. <laughs> Finnish names are the best in the NHL. And yeah, I I absolutely love that tweet. Yeah, Minnesota is uh, not doing so well out of the gates this season, out of the shoot this season. Mm, They're, Devin uh, Dubnik back to his uh, old self. Yeah, I mean it's been a few years uh, since he's. I mean, but we, he is who we thought he was. And no, that's Ryan true. Donato <laughs> getting the healthy scratch. Mm. Oof. Bad fantasy pickup for me. You know it's funny because uh, Dallas slow out of the gates too. They played, a, you know, it's fun. They played eleven games, and uh, yeah. I think uh, b- before last night, Chicago played six. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, how is that? Dal- how is that game discrepancy so ho- so right. much? Dallas, My God. Has, Dallas has played a lot of hockey, and they don't have and, a lot of points to show. Right, I mean, a seven. And, yeah, I mean they've they've gone to uh, overtime and shootouts a few times, but they're they're not getting the extra points. They've they definitely have had a very slow start. Three seven and one. It's funny the bottom three in the division: Dallas, Chicago, Minnesota. Winnipeg's fourth. Uh, th- I mean, you know, I, I think this division is probably the best in, in NHL. But I mean, not if Dallas keeps playing this way. Or I mean, Winnipeg lost a lot. We talked about that in the preseason. Uh, but but Dallas is uh, kind of surprised. I thought I thought Dallas would be a little better, but it's right. still, it's still early. Yeah, I thought for sure it was it was going to be the central was really going to come down. It, it was going to be a four horse race: Nashville, Colorado, St. Louis, and Dallas. Which you know it could be still. And I mean, it still could be real early right now. It just doesn't look that way. A lot and, of the talk going into the season. Uh, sorry, Bill. Go ahead and finish. No, 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 no. Or, you go I was going to say a lot of the talk going into the season was that the Pacific was weak and the Central was was strong. The Ukraine but, is weak. Know, yeah, but the Pacific is is. The specific, sorry, the specific division. Uh, they're looking good. There's some good teams over there. Now, granted, um, you know, we all like to reference Buffalo last season and this season. That's playing well. Bonkers. You, nev- they, you never same- know. Hutton. Look at look at how teams can bottom out just like that. And maybe in two weeks we're talking about how the, the specific division looks like who we thought they were and the central is looking much better. Hutton's playing out of this world again. He's like leading the league in, in uh, stats and, and just exactly what it was last year with Buffalo tearing it up. And I have a feeling they're going to be doing the same thing this year. I mean... Cratering uh, come December? January 1st, where are they going to be? Yeah. I mean, I don't... We'll see. Uh, but, but Ryan O'Reilly is a team cancer. <laughs> right. Yes. Remember right. that. <laughs> right. He'll never, Did you he'll, see... he'll never win any trophies. Did you see that shootout goal by Patrick Berglund? Did we talk about yeah, that? Yeah, in, in Sweden. Uh, I saw it, yeah. yeah Holy the, cow. The Peter Forsberg. Beautiful. It was nice. Good for him. We could have used that against uh, whoever we had in the shootout. <laughs> Why am I drawing a blank? We just talked about it. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Vancouver. Against, yeah. Vancouver. Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the references uh, on this show. Oh, my God. Uh, St. <laughs> Louis and the cut. Avalanche. <laughs> What's that? That's a deep cut. That is a deep cut. <laughs> uh, St. Louis and Colorado uh, played the other night. Uh, the Blues needed this game. I, I mean, it's early in the season. I get it. But uh, this was a th- – I, I, I told Bill before I started watching the game after volleyball, I was like, you know, uh, I can totally see the Blues. Like, I mean – They'll get up for the Avalanche. I think they'll get up for the Avalanche yeah. and play a really good game. They, they, mm. Playing the level of the opponent kind of thing, uh, and they're coming into St. Louis. I can see the Blues playing a really good game tonight. And the fact that yeah. the Avalanche uh, hadn't lost in regulation yet. Right. right. Yeah. They, 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 oh, the Blues that, are like, oh, yeah, hold my beer, right? Yeah, right. So. so yeah, no. I, it, I felt it, the same way. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I hoped. I, I didn't. All I had was hope because after witnessing whatever it was I witnessed on Saturday, right. like it, it just uh, there was no faith. But it was just it was hope. I was worried, and, I, I, but I was like I I, right. I felt good. Uh, I was cautious, optimistic about the game. I, I really did feel good about it. But that uh, the second period, yeah. Oh my god, that was that was vintage cup run blues. Yep. And, so why were you so negative? The Blues won a Stanley Cup. <laughs> That was Bill's. The Blues won the Stanley talking, Cup. Uh, yeah, no, second period, uh, maybe short of the, uh, aside from the very first period of the season, uh, maybe it was better than that one. Uh, their second period might have been the best period all season, and that says a lot because they played tremendously that first period of the season, the first game. They took it to them. It wasn't just yeah. a matter of like uh, Colorado sitting back. The Blues, I mean, they they were trying to 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 charge the offense, and the Blues just. Didn't give them any room. That was the type of hockey we saw when they were playing their best in the playoffs last year. Colorado had one shot on goal in the second period. Yep. And that was late, too, right? right. No, no, it was early. And was the it early? Blues, Blues just held them. It was, I think they went 24 minutes yep. between shots. Something like that. Uh, between even strength shots. Yep. I shot them 11 to 1 in the period uh, and 2 to nothing on the scoreboard in the period. So, uh, And it was 1 to 1 going into the second. Uh, so and then three to one after the second, early and on and after the third. And after the, right. uh, <laughs> early early on though, Bennington had to make a couple of key saves on the par, uh, the penalty kill uh, to keep the game scoreless, including a point blank attempt by uh, Kadri. Oh, remember that one? Yeah, that, that was, was a good save. Yeah. save. That was that was a it, save. That was a save where he's just playing big. It's so close and so tight. You you, you can't really react. You got to take up as much space as you can. And you talk about job. key saves, and this yeah. is something obviously we we talked about it last week. I can't remember what game it was where he made a key save. And we talked about it all the playoffs last year where you need your goalie to step up. And, man, he stepped up there. That was a huge save. And, you know, it. it I know he gave up the rebound, and, and it kind of was kind of forgotten because of that. You know, you don't get the stoppage in play. You get the instant replay right away. Man, that was beautiful. I mean, he, like you said, he got big. He took up the net. He got down on his knees and, and blocked the lower half of the net. I mean, Kadri had nothing to shoot at. And it was a one timer, just beautiful stuff. A nice setup by McKinnon too. I mean that. Yeah. M- McKinnon is, uh, man, he's uh, he scares the shit out of me. Every, I mean every day. I'm. I think it was that shift. Uh, uh, a few seconds before he passed to Kadri, he had a chance for a one timer and a good scoring chance from the left side, like his his office over there, like right. the Ovechkin, where, Ovechkin area. Right where he owns the Blues. Right. Exactly. Ties the game late every time. Uh, but uh, everyone. He, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say he 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 passed up opportunity, curled in the corner, and then uh, came back out and passed to Kadri, who, uh, what we talked about, he had a great chance. That everyone, high danger scoring. Everyone right? talks. Everyone talks about uh, McDavid and his ability to to you know shoot while still moving his feet, and and obviously a lot of players can do what McKinnon does, but not as well as McKinnon in the terms of the deeks, the passes he does while he's still pumping his feet and still moving at a high speed. That's why he's so successful. And, yeah, every time he's on the ice, I'm thinking, don't let that guy touch the puck. I mean, my God, some of the stuff that that guy's done the last couple of years to just tear defenses apart, and you saw it in that play. And, luckily, Bennington came up big for him because the Blues defense looks shell-shocked. Like, they they didn't think that pass could get through is, is the way I read that. And, and it did because he put it right on the tape. He uh, That's how he scored his goal. He was uh, It's all in one motion, skating, shooting, all in one motion. Uh, really deceptive. Uh, the mm-hmm. shot gets off quick, and when he scored his goal, he was out high, 
mm-hmm. but he was just uh, uh, striding and shooting all in the same motion, right. and, and, and and defense can't get in the. They're not prepared to block it. Right, and Bennington never saw it. Never saw it. Never, never saw it. Completely ball. screened. It was. It was. Yeah. It's a great shot. Like yeah, I mean, he. That's why he's top three hockey IQ. Yep. It's him, Mc, uh, him, McDavid, and Crosby. Top three hockey IQ guys. Yeah, I'd, I'd, sure. I'd buy that. Koliakovo. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Kurt. Serious question. Uh, do you think he'd be able to come in on a shootout and fake a slap shot, go to the backhand and score? <laughs> um, well, uh, he'd probably have to go to the backhand because I went forehand. Oh, I'm the, sorry. I did. I went forehand. That's right. That's how good you are. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've never seen him do it, so I, I, I'm going to say he can't. Yeah, you're probably <laughs> right. Nathan, if you're listening, big boy, give Kurt a call. He'll be glad to show you that move. Oh, uh, the Blues cashed in on their early power play chance, though, because uh, that was that Codgers chance on the power play. Uh, Schwartz set up a uh, nice screen on the play, and uh, Shen fired a wrister by Grubauer. Far post, who uh, who couldn't pick up in time. That's kind of like it's almost become uh, Shen's signature move, that uh, kind of glide to the middle and just a hard wrister far post. Yeah. Uh, beat uh, Rask in the in the game one of the final last year, on that same kind of play, just a hard wrister past a goalie blocker side. It can't be uh, overstated how much I love the way he's played since he signed that contract extension. I no mean, kidding. how many times do you see players? Sign a contract extension, and then instantly just scoring drought five, six games. Mm-hmm. Oh, they scored yep. one goal in their last 12. You know, Braden Shen has been on fire since he signed that extension. Now, obviously, that's not going to last for eight years, but you got to hope that lasts at least this year and maybe even in next year in three years because, man, he's when he's on, he is on. He right. leads the team in, in uh, goals. He's got six. Uh, so, uh, yeah, no complaints. Yeah, I, that that top line. I mean, even Schwartz is getting in on it with the uh, the goal against Montreal. Um, Tarasenko's been, you know, a better setup man with as hot as Shen's been. Um, but Tarasenko's put a couple goals in the net now. Uh, hard not to be mm-hmm. excited about the top line. Sure. Um, so hopefully they can continue a little momentum coming out of that game and don't play down to the Kings. Perron's goal uh, that put the Blues back up on top for good and a nice little passing play that uh, started with Falk, who found Tarasenko across ice uh, in the offensive zone, who then found Perron in the soft spot in the slot between the forwards and the defense. This is kind of like uh, the McKinnon to Kadri setup, except it was not quite as tight on the goal. Uh, it was bang, bang, and uh, Perron. And we scored. And we scored. Grubauer was back in his net a little bit more because, I mean, he's not – he's not. that's a bang, bang play. He's not challenging. So uh, – Great shot. Great I'd shot. I'd love to see the, Falk get in on the offense like that. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, yeah, I, I was, uh, I, I've been waiting for his offense to kind of start putting points on the board, and uh, that was that was nice. I, I enjoyed that one. Well, you mentioned Tarasenko and, and kind of becoming a playmaker at this point. Um, you know, I've had a couple people asking me uh, just uh, uh, right before he scored his goal against the Islanders, are you worried about him not scoring? And I'm like, no, because Braden Shen's scoring. I mean, if you're – Mm-hmm. Offense, if your your line is still doing it and still bringing offense and Tarasenko is contributing by getting assists, I don't care if he doesn't score a goal the whole year. If he has 75 assists on the year, hell yeah, let's, let's do that. I mean, I if it's working, it's working. And uh, and and he's looking good with his passing ability this year so far. The uh, third and final goal of the night for the Blues came after the Blues entered the zone and Schwartz fired the puck from the point behind the net. Banked off the end boards to Sarasenko, who uh, quickly fired the puck in, on net from a bad angle, uh, catching Grubauer uh, before he got set, and it banked off his arm or sticking in. Uh, yeah, a leaker. Yeah, a leaker. And I th- I want to say Schwartz passed that puck to Sarasenko on purpose. Uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it was. Absolutely. He he fired. He was not. It was not a shot. Uh, it was a pat. It was a bank pass off the backboard to Tarasenko, who was wide open over there, and and uh, Tarasenko uh, smart hockey play. I always think of Brendan Shanahan when I see those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. He was notorious for that kind of thing, banking off the goalie in from. Yeah, the end except line. during Shanahan's days, the, uh, the the boards weren't lively. No, they weren't. Um, so St. Louis ended their uh, four game losing. Oh, we didn't blow the two goal lead, by the way. Like, right. We had a two right. goal lead and we held on to it. Right. Um, which is which you know that's some major progress. Uh, the Blues ended their four-game losing streak and ended Colorado's eight-game point streak and handed them their first regulation loss of the season. 
Um, Rantanen left the game with a lower body injury, which looked very painful. Oh, man. Good. Yeah. Feet aren't supposed to go that way. No, ankles don't bend that way. Right. <laughs> we got to witness two pretty gruesome injuries yep. one day. That's true. Uh, a guy on a volleyball team broke his foot, two, broke two bones in his foot and tore some ligaments. Ugh. How? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, ah. yeah. In rec league volleyball. Yep. It, How did that happen? He's a good player, too. <laughs> went up for a block. Went for a block and came down funny on his uh, foot oh. and kind of stumbled and, yeah, fell down. That's and, rough. Yeah. He knew right away, too. He, goes, yeah. he told me, it's broken. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. that sucks. Yeah, that so, uh, that retina injury, holy cow. <laughs> when they showed the replay, like, I, I always think of, and obviously it's not as horrific, the Clint Malarchuk moment oh, when God. he got hit. And then you hear that they, they had the camera focusing on him, and you could just see the blood going crazy. And the, the announcer even goes, get the camera off him. Nobody needs to see that. Yeah. And I started thinking that as I kept showing the replay. I'm like, oh, just please, we don't need to watch this. I don't want to see that. that that's gruesome. It, uh, it, and I, I, I don't know if it's been said how bad it is yet. Have they said? I haven't seen. I saw he's out. That's all I saw. Yeah, I, I can imagine. It's, uh, Wasn't it, was it the playoffs last year? I think it was Colton Pareko. There was a real bad looking injury where he like landed on his foot weird and it twisted. That wasn't that was his rookie season. Yeah, th- was that his rookie the season? Islanders. Yeah, that was That's behind what the it goal, right, kind of. Right. Yeah, it was. That, yeah, and we all I even thought, said like, how was he not out for six months after that? I thought something was shattered in his. Yeah, I that was bad. So maybe we're wrong here on Ratnan, but maybe. I doubt uh, it. You know, I mean, it was only bent like that for a. If, uh, I mean, you know, I, I, I blink. So it just, it scares me, man. Like I, I think about it and it's like, that could easily happen to me. I mean, that was such a weird freak play. Oh. That could happen to any hockey player. Yeah. It, and it's just, it's just a toe pick. Ugh. Toe pick or he, it just hit a rut. Yeah. Um, Brube said after the game that their, uh, the blues, uh, their, the blues game without the puck, uh, was their best this season. And uh, Avalanche captain uh, Landis Cog said after the game, for us, it was more about us than them. Uh, to be honest, it wouldn't have mattered if they had their A game or their C game tonight. We just weren't good enough, and on a night like tonight, we weren't going to beat many, too many teams. It's always interesting when, when your team plays really well. And you say, oh, hey, we played really well tonight. We did a lot of things right, and you rattle off what we did right and why it went right and why we won. And the other team is on the other side of the fence saying, well, the reason I lost is because we did this poorly and this poorly and this poorly. And uh, it's probably a combination of both. But it's always it's interesting to matchups. hear. It's, it's always interesting to hear analysis when you win versus when you lose and then the opposite side for the other team because it's always, like, well, which is it? Did you play really well or did you just suck tonight? Because Montreal is probably saying they played kick-ass hockey on uh, Saturday, beating us 5-2. to two. Absolutely. So uh, that's just the way it goes. You always look at your game and you say, what do yeah. we do right? What do we sure. do wrong? And when you lose, it's, okay, we did a lot more wrong than we did right. True. But a lot of times the reason why you might do something right is because the other team did something wrong. Yeah. So there's that. And like thoughts, I said, it's, it's, com- it's, it's, a com- it's a combination of both. It's, I mean, like we've talked about this before. There are mistakes that happen all the time in hockey games. It's just a matter of what team takes advantage of the most mistakes. Yeah. And when you lose, you point out your mistakes. Uh, last week's show, uh, the power play, the lose power play was at 26.7%, which was 11th overall. The penalty not kill bad. was, no, not bad at all. The penalty kill was 91.7%. Very good. Fourth overall. Yeah. Over the last week, the Blues went 1 for 12 on the power play, which uh, over the last week was 8.3%, 26th in the NHL, and killed off 12 of 15 penalties. That was good for 80%, which is 17th in the NHL. So their current NHL special teams ranks are... From this, from the total games played so far, eighteen point five percent on the power play, which is eighteenth penalty kill, eighty five point two, eighth overall. So we've dropped, which is not right. surprising considering the way we played this past week, aside right. from Colorado, Montreal. Yet they got three of six points though. Yeah, yeah. you know, M- Montreal. I mean, I'm not saying that's not what we, on the power play. That's true. I'm not saying that's what we want, but you know, you look at that, you say, wow, we we had a twenty sixth best power play and a seventeenth best penalty kill yet they got half the points that they needed so true you and know you, you play still good five get the on, points when you need them you play good five on five right you yeah. win the cup 
right. Yeah, and, right. <laughs> It's still so so early though. Oh, I know. I know. I'm. Right, I'm just. Right. I was it's just comparing. Right. right. Uh, where we are now to where we were last week, uh, and and we're, we've fallen. I get it. So, but it's just it. I know. You know. Small sample size, two or three games will early on the season will, can drastically affect your your stats. But it was just interesting to look at. Um, next up for the Blues at home tomorrow night, Thursday versus the LA Kings. The Kings are four, five, and oh, eight points, seventh place in the Pacific. Not playing particularly well. Uh, they're two and two on the road. Uh, LA has won the last two games, uh, however, beating Calgary four to one on Saturday and Winnipeg three to two on Tuesday. Their power play is ranked twenty seventh at eleven point one percent, and their penalty kill is ranked twenty second at seventy five point eight. So the the biggest worry here, I, I think all of St. Louis is thinking this right now, is big game against Colorado. They played one of their best games of the year. Mm-hmm. Now you're yep. playing. Now listen, L.A. As you said, they have they have won their last two games, and they're two and two on the road. So they're not looking bad. They got plenty of veteran guys. They can still come in and and contribute. And we all have seen what they've done against the Blues in the past. But at the end of the day, this is a team the Blues should beat, and they should be able oh. to step in and command the game early. Jonathan Quick has been known to give up some pretty weak goals this year. You get the pucks to the net, get the pucks deep. Nah, I'm not gonna go in the cliches, but they just pucks should on be net. able to. Yeah, they should be able to get to to play their game tomorrow night. It's at home. You get the matchups, and you have to hope that they come in with a killer mentality like they did against Colorado. And if they do, they're going to be just fine. But if we see them lay back at all, like we've seen them do in the past this season, uh could spell some trouble for the King, for uh, the Blues because the Kings uh, have bounced on some teams early whenever they uh, uh, don't come out of the gate playing well. And everybody knows the best fish tacos are from L.A. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a letter King reference. Oh, okay. Come I, on. I, I haven't seen it. every episode yet. I'm, still, I'm trying to get caught up. Figure it out. Figure it out. I'm trying. Ah, uh, um, that uh, that's gonna about wrap her up for this uh, this show number two twenty two all time. Uh, real quick in the YouTube chat, uh, let's see what the hell. Lachlan ruined it. Said uh, Bill, just curious, how much was that replica stand in the cup? So on the on the panel, it's behind you, but yeah. Bill and I are in the same room. Well, I'm taking it home <laughs> with me today. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, and it was it was not cheap. Uh, the story behind that is I uh, I had it in my Amazon cart, and I uh, before Game Seven, not that one. The rep, that's the cardboard one. But Kurt paid two hundred and thirty five dollars. That was a printout off the internet. It was a high high res printout. So, but the uh, yeah the, I had it in my Amazon cart uh, before Game Seven, and I thought okay, I'm gonna order this if the Blues win, and so I had it in my and so we're winning. You know, as soon as it went, up, went up four to one, I was like, "Okay, um, I'm I'm buying or four nothing, four nothing." I'm, I I went to my cart, my phone, and I bought it, and it was sold out like thirty minutes after the game was over, something like that. So it was it was not it was a it was not cheap. It was uh, actually it's a lot more expensive now. It was on sale when I when I put it in my cart. It was like two hundred bucks, uh, and I think it's like two forty now, or it was. I don't know. It may have gone down again. I have no idea. But if you can get it for two hundred dollars, it's uh, I think it's a pretty good deal. It's nice. We drank out of it. We did. We did the uh, Stanley Cup, uh, the the first show after the Stanley yep. Cup. The first I've show. I've got a the... smaller one here. Uh, I got this on. Mm. Somebody personally made it on Etsy, and uh, I got it for I think it was only fifty bucks. That's pretty so cool. Is that uh, is that a three uh, D printer uh, one or what is that? It. I'm not sure. I mean, I was sent it. I didn't print it myself. But, is it is it plastic? Yeah. Okay, so that's why it's probably three D printed, right? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. It's nice. I mean, it's a nice one. I like it. It looks nice. It's good it's size. It's not shiny like yours, but I mean, it it looks like the real deal. It's good stuff. I have a small one here. There it is. Oh, you mean like also my small yes. one? Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Does yours have an NHL logo or a Blues? Uh, I think mine. There, there we go. The we have same logo. one. Yep. Same one. For the YouTube uh, folks watching the show, if you're watching uh, on the podcast, or <laughs> if you're listening on the podcast, uh, maybe check out the uh, YouTube show if you want to see the show. If you want to get the visual references. Yeah. Sometimes the visual yes. is nice. 
on YouTube. That's true. And Let's you get, get to look at Jeff Ponder. We have our uh, YouTube channel, so that's right. In his flow. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. I got to go. Got yeah, stuff to do. Uh, one more thing, guys. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as I was talking to Natalie earlier, um, Sarah on Twitter had messaged me and asked, uh, has anyone scored me a hat for the Hockey Fights Cancer Night? Um, for the uh, Obviously, I've, I've mentioned this on Twitter before. I'm always looking for a leukemia uh, blues hat, the orange one. Can never get my hands on one. She said she's going to order me one. So, uh, Sarah, if you're listening, I think it's SAR Sings 27 Thank you very, very much. That means a lot to me. Um, I imagine that's why she sent me that, because she's listening to the show. So uh, very cool of her. I think she was part of that Blues Rants podcast. I don't know if that's still around. Uh, I believe she was. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Sarah. Very cool. Uh, And thanks to Natalie as well. Yes. Thank you to Natalie for coming on the show and uh, bearing with us while we helped uh, helped her fix uh, her connectivity issues. which and again, well, Bill, Bill, Bill fixed them. Bill. Yeah, you, Bill. <laughs> there's no we about it. <laughs> um, thank you, uh, everyone else, for listening. Appreciate it very much. Uh, for Jeff Ponder and Bill Day, I am Kurt Price. That will conclude this week's broadcast of Let's Go Blues Radio. Until next time, everyone. Let's go blues. Let's go blues. <laughs> let's go blues. <laughs>